I'm Dr. Shahan Perera from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, University of Murtur. In this session, I will give you an introduction to machine learning with Python. Once you complete all the sessions in this section, you will be able to create your own machine learning application using some of the available Python libraries. We will be using the standard color coding scheme to make it easy to find the important points in each slide. So let's look at what is machine learning. Machine learning can be described as uh, developing a system that can extract knowledge from data to perform a specific task. You know how to write code. Let's assume that you want to find out whether it's going to rain or not, depending on the temperature, the humidity, and the cloud cover. And also you know that when the temperature and the humidity and the cloud cover is high, it is going to rain. So what you can do is uh, you can design a small algorithm and maybe devise an if then else clause uh, that can tell us when we give the temperature, cloud cover and the humidity, whether it's going to rain or not. How can, we, how can you be sure that we got this condition right? And also did we get the numbers right, the values right? If for some reason, if there is a slightly different scenario, would it always give you the answer? So what if, if we can have a system that can look at the data that we give and be able to figure out what is the logic, what is the algorithm that needs to be used to give the correct output for us? That is what we try to do with machine learning. In the traditional way of coding, we design the algorithm and then we write the code and we get the computer to execute it. When we give the input, such as in this case of uh, figuring out whether it's going to rain or not, when we give the temperature, the cloud cover, and also the humidity, the system, based on the algorithm that we have written, will be able to tell us whether it's going to rain or not. But when using a machine learning approach, we start with the data. We give the data to a machine learning algorithm and ask the machine learning algorithm to come up with a model or a system or algorithm that can tell us whether it's going to rain or not based on the data that is given to us. Once we have the model, what we can do is we can give that model to a system and ask it to be executed. And when we give the input data with certain values for temperature, humidity, and cloud cover, it will be able to tell us whether it's going to rain or not. This is something like uh, giving a large collection of questions and the corresponding answer to you without telling you how to come up with the answer. We are asking you to figure out based on the question and the answer, how to come up with the answer. And when we give a question without the answer, since you have figured out how to figure out the answer for a given corresponding question, you should be able to give the answer to the question where the answer is not given. That is something similar to what we try to do with machine learning. What can we do with machine learning? Object classification is something that we do with machine learning where we can separate cats from dogs. And also if we have a situation where we want to separate good products from bad products in a production line, that can be very easily done using machine learning. We can also go for predictions where we can predict the temperature or else if you want to predict the stock values or in the stock market or we want to predict the exchange rates in, in, the, in a given country or else we can also go for recommendations. For example, Facebook gets a lot of posts, right? So from all the posts that are relevant for you, which post should Facebook show you so that Facebook can keep you hooked to Facebook or distracted on Facebook so that you won't go and do your homework? Now, there are lots of applications in recommendation systems, in finance, in transport, in banking, you name it, you have applications where they are using machine learning to provide much better services for people. Here is another very good example, very much closer to you. What about us being able to tell us which areas are going to have an outbreak of dengue in the next week, not today, 
we can figure out when there is outbreak. But before it happens, is it possible for us to tell whether there is going to be an outbreak? If we can find those places using machine learning and some relevant data, such as the case data and weather and population and maybe movement data, we will be able to target those areas and clean them so that mosquito breeding can be reduced or stopped so that we can somehow try to stop and reduce the spread of dengue. If you look at some of the presented applications, it is very hard and tedious to come out with the rules that can be used to accomplish those tasks and maybe code it. But in most cases, we can collect large amounts of data when those tasks occur. Even if we build a set of rules and write a program with those rules, if we come across a slightly different scenario, the program will fail or give the wrong answer. So machine learning allows us to ask computers to build systems by looking at relevant example data. Whatever area you look at, there are machine learning applications with the availability of a lot of data and computational power and sophisticated machine learning algorithms. We see loads of applications in character recognition, language understanding, recommender systems, healthcare, medicine, autonomous robots, self-driving cars, finance, and there are lots of other areas where machine learning is being used extensively. There are some key definitions that we use in machine learning. Label is the object or the class that we want to predict or classify. For example, in this case for rain, it's yes or no. Features are the characteristics of the data objects we have, such as the temperature, humidity, and cloud cover in this example. Examples are the label data samples that we have captured that can be used to build the model. And the model is the system that captures the relationship between the features of an object and the corresponding label that we have. And training a model is the activity of building the model using the labeled examples that we have. And inference using the model is when we attempt to use the trained model to forecast if it is going to rain or not by giving it a sample input with temperature, humidity, and cloud cover in this example. There are three major types of learning. In supervised learning, we give label data and ask the system to learn a model to tell us the label when we give an item without the label. In this example, if we give an unlabeled apple to the system, it will be able to tell us that it is an apple. And if we give something else, it will also be able to tell us it's not an apple. In unsupervised learning, where we give collection of data without the labels and ask the machine learning algorithm to learn a possible way of separating them into groups based on the characteristics of the data that we have given. In this example, separating these items into apples, oranges, and bananas will be the learning that the machine learning algorithm will be doing. Reinforcement learning is where we get an agent or system to continuously learn based on the rewards and punishments that it gets from the environment. It is uh, similar to how we would train a dog to listen to our commands by rewarding it when it is behaving well and also giving small punishments when it goes astray. Python can be used to explore and build applications in machine learning because it has the power of a general purpose programming language such as Java or C++. And it can also be used as a scripting language similar to using a domain specific scripting language like R or MATLAB. There are many libraries available for Python, so you don't need to write code for most of the machine learning functionalities. You can make an API function call to the library and be able to use most of the machine learning activities. Python also allows us to directly interact with the data using a command terminal or using notebooks that are easy to use and keep track of what you have done while building your machine learning model. This, this helps us to quickly develop machine learning models and try them 
multiple times with multiple small variations to the models. Here are some of the major Python libraries and tools available for machine learning. In the following few slides, we will give you a very brief introduction to those libraries so that you get to know what you can do with them. Jupyter Notebooks is an interactive programming environment that allows us to execute code in a browser. This is very useful for us to explore data quickly and also helps us to build machine learning models and test them very quickly. It also allows us to keep text descriptions of what we have done or what we are planning to do, including giving equations and other diagrams to keep these descriptions in an easy to understand format. This is like commenting in a Python code, but on Jupyter Notebooks, the comments can be formatted and presented in much nicer way, making it easy to understand. Obviously, we can have the code in Jupyter Notebooks, the most important part. And also we can have the outputs such as graphs and plots as part of the notebook, making it easy to document and visualize the observations that we have made about the data and maybe about the outcomes of machine learning algorithms we have attempted in the code. We can consider notebooks as one-stop shop for quick and easy development of machine learning solutions. It is like a notebook or old diary you use to write down notes about a solution to a problem and observations and code. The important thing is the code is not static. You can also execute the code on your notebook. Scikit-learn is a Python library with a large number of widely used state-of-the-art machine learning algorithm with some very good documentation that will help you to use the library. So with the library and some relevant data, you should be able to develop a machine learning model in a few minutes. You can learn about the API by going into the documentation available online. And also there are tutorials and user guides on how to use this library. NumPy is also a Python library that has a large number of facilities to help you to do scientific computing, or in other words, uh, allow us to solve some complex mathematical computations that are required in solving uh, science and engineering problems. It provides functionality for multidimensional arrays and a collection of advanced mathematical operations that can be executed, such as uh, linear algebra operations, Fourier transformations, generating pseudo-random numbers. You can use these functionalities in machine learning to process the input or output data. And sometimes you may use this to modify the machine learning algorithms that are available in Python. SciFi is also another Python library with many facilities to help us do scientific computing. It has more advanced functions than NumPy, including advanced linear algebra, mathematical operations, uh, signal processing, mathematical and statistical distributions. Once again, this library is also mainly used for data processing, or in other words, uh, to manipulate or change your data to a way that you want. Scikit-learn library uses both NumPy and SciPy for building machine learning models. The name SciPy comes from scientific Python, indicating that we use it for scientific computing. Pandas is a Python library that allows you to manipulate data as if you were using a spreadsheet for Excel. You can use rows and columns to identify and write formulas to manipulate the data. Also, you can use SQL like uh, queries on the data. We call the place where we put the data in Pandas the data frame or the, the structure where we put the data. Data frame allows us or you to have multiple different data types in a single row, which is not possible in arrays that we had in NumPy. We can also load different types of data into this data frame. Data can come from SQL, CSV, XLS, or any format, you name it, we will be able to import it into data frames. In most machine learning projects, the first step would be to load the data into pandas 
as a data frame and then explore the data. The name pandas come from panel data, indicating that the data is presented on a panel. Matplotlib is a comprehensive library for creating static and animated and interactive visualizations in Python. Matplotlib makes it easy to produce very high quality graphs very easily with a few commands. You can draw graphs and plots. You can also have graphs and plots in your Jupyter notebooks using Matplotlib. There are also a few other advanced Python libraries that allow you to use deep neural networks for machine learning. In neural networks, we try to simulate how the human brain works to learn and get the computers also to learn in a similar manner. Deep neural networks are kind of an advanced, more sophisticated version of neural networks and have been very, very successfully used in multiple applications, including self-driving cars, natural language understanding, etc. This is Alexa, a device that can understand what I speak and respond to me, developed by Amazon. Alexa, is it going to rain today? No rain is expected today. Thank you. My pleasure, just doing my job. In this session, we covered what is machine learning, why we need machine learning, and what we can do with machine learning. Also, we got a brief introduction to some of the machine learning libraries and tools that are available. You may not need to know machine learning to be a full stack developer, but the purpose of introducing this topic to you is to give you the skill of using libraries in Python so that you can have the confidence of making API calls using Python or any other language when required to build application in the future as a future full stack developer. You may be also thinking if we can get machine learning to write code for us, how are we going to find jobs in the future? Don't worry, there's a long way to go for this type of code development for our, all our requirements to become a reality. So if you work hard and become a full stack developer, there'll be plenty of jobs that you can do. See you in another session.